Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. Is your wife a cheating hacker and wants to pin the theft on you? Today we have a story with just such a plot twist. Enjoy the show! Crap, I became too greedy. The last two million must have done it. I should have just forgotten about it. I knew something was wrong with this bill. Crap, now they're getting closer, although they seem to think that I didn't know that yet. This will help. I still had time to leave and make sure they couldn't track me any further. Luckily, I had a plan for this. So, who am I, and who is trying to track me? Who I am now is not important since this identity is about to disappear completely in two hours. I will become someone completely different. The trail the hunters are following will reach a dead end before they can get enough information to figure out who I am. What I am or will soon become is a hacker. I'm a very good hacker. I'm also a very angry hacker with a very select list of targets. I'm hunting pills cartels. I monitor their bank accounts and, anonymously of course, provide incriminating evidence to the appropriate authorities. I am personally responsible for the conviction of four politicians, at least 50 police officers, a dozen soldiers in different countries, and more petty traders than I can even count. I also siphoned over $100 million from their coffers. Of course, I take a percentage of that, but about 80% goes to various charities, most of them dealing with pill addiction and rehabilitation programs. Why, you ask? Just because my little sister got involved with the wrong guy. I really didn't like him, but she didn't listen to me. I did everything I could, but she made her choice. I tried my best to take care of her after our parents died. I've always been very good with computers, but the two dark years I spent in depressive isolation after identifying what was left of her body took me from really good to almost magical. I spent those two years alone in the basement of my parents' old house, learning dark secrets and how to manipulate them. I found rear doors in most security programs. Somewhere during these two years, some very harmful information about a gang of pill addicts that tortured and killed my sister fell into the hands of the DA. Rival gangs received information that the gang in question was using state evidence against others to try to make a deal. The gangs moved faster than the cops, so the government saved a lot of money on lawsuits. My pursuers are hired by the cartel, which I relieved of approximately $30 million. I really should have stopped at $28 million, but then I discovered another small account. I knew there was something wrong with it, but I was young, stupid, and still angry. As soon as this money passed through 40 different accounts in 6 countries, my anti-hacking programs began to raise alarm bells. Someone included a backtracking program on the account. They were looking for the place where the attack began. It will take some time. They had to go through about 100 IP addresses before they could even begin a chain of bypass servers. I inserted the flash drive and made a few keystrokes and mouse clicks. The trail leading to me was effectively cut off with no way to obtain data. The abandoned building I lived in burned down from a homeless fire that got out of control. The hard drives and memory cards were burned in a fire in the desert, along with all my personal documents. Convinced that it was impossible to obtain any information from the burning pile of debris, I got into the van and drove to the west. I arrived in Las Vegas four days later. Five years later. Darling, help me, the computer is acting up again, I called my beautiful wife Linda. Seriously, Mark, how is it possible for a 25-year-old man to be so bad at computers? What would you do without me, she said, quickly kissing the top of my head. A couple of quick clicks and keystrokes, and I was back to checking my email. Dinner will be ready in about half an hour. Thank you, dear, I replied, watching her return to the kitchen. It's been two years since Linda and I got married. I couldn't believe how lucky I was after leaving my previous life. I recreated myself. I worked as a truck driver for a local lumber mill. We were a trade union yard, so the wages were decent. I very carefully withdrew a couple of $1,000 from one of my offshore accounts and bought a nice, modest three-bedroom house on about an acre of land. I built a secluded building next to the house to use as a store and warehouse. I also added a hidden room to restore and update my computer system. It was a small walkthrough storage room, but it had a raised floor that went up to access the stairs leading underground. It looked like a regular concrete floor. 
I decided that I would give up prosecuting dealers and cartels for a while. I had enough money stashed away in case I needed it, and it was prudent to disappear and let things cool. However, I didn't want to lose my skills, and I needed to keep up with new technologies. The store was for my hobby of building old muscle cars. My wife was not at all interested in this, so she never came into my store. It also gave me time and privacy to go online and play a little without her suspecting anything. You might be wondering why I'm hiding this from her. The truth is that she knows me as a simple mechanic and truck driver who knows almost nothing about computers. Obviously, when I met her and we started dating, I couldn't just go out and introduce myself as a hacker named Ghost in the Computer Underground. First of all, the feds were looking for me. I committed several cyber crimes, and they also wanted to lock me in a room and use my skills for their purposes. Secondly, there were some very bad criminal organizations that had me on their target list. If they had caught me, my end would have been very ugly and extremely painful. How long would our relationship last after this? Do you even need to ask? After we got married, there were a few more things to do. It was for her own protection. If she didn't know, they couldn't use her to get any information. No, it's better that she only knows the man she married. Okay, a little about my wife. First of all, she is the most beautiful woman on the planet for me. I always read in these stories that every woman is always the most beautiful woman on the planet, and I wonder how there can be more than one. I'm not going to lie to you. To you, she may only be above average in appearance, but to me, she is a goddess. Different points of view and different touches. She is 5 feet 6 inches tall, with wavy coppery bronze hair down to mid-back, emerald green eyes, 34D chest, a small waist with a flat tummy, slightly wide 40 hips within 5th place to die for, long slender tone and tanned legs. She has a thin nose, high cheekbones, dimples when she smiles, full kissable lips, and a chin, but not too prominent. So, how did we meet? I was working at the sawmill one afternoon when she came in. She needed a couple of boards to put up shelving in her new apartment. While we were choosing her order, she mentioned that she wasn't really very good with tools, apparently. I offered to come over after work and install the shelves for her. My price was that she would buy the beer and let me do it for dinner the next night. After this, dinner turned into dancing. Sorry, guys and girls, there's no wild into here. The date ended with just a chaste kiss on the cheek. The truth was that I was really afraid of girls. Perhaps a little explanation is in order here. When I stole all that money from the cartel, I was a skinny 19-year-old, 6 feet 1 inch 110 pounds computer nerd. My intimate life up to this point was non-existent. Since my arrival in Las Vegas, I have had a total of three experiences with by girls of easy virtue. The first one was quite disappointing. She stood on Fremont Street. I picked her up. We did it in the back seat of my car, but she acted like a robot. The second time, I was in a brothel in Perimb. At least she acted like she cared. My third time was also in a brothel in Perimb. This time, I had the necessary funds. I paid for the whole night and made her really teach me how to please a woman. Now, I was dating a woman I liked. It wasn't until our fifth date that we had a night. I took her to dinner at the Stratosphere. From there, we moved to a hot dance club on the Strip. After a bottle of expensive wine with dinner and a few drinks at the club between dances for two hours, we returned to my house. I used to think she was beautiful, but without clothes, she was an absolute goddess. I didn't even have to ask. The wet sheets answered my questions about whether everything was okay. As long as I made her happy, I was fine. Apparently, the last easy girl I visited actually taught me well. I also spent a whole year playing sports. This, combined with my work, has increased my muscle mass and endurance. I was now 6 feet 1 inch tall, 220 pounds. Of course, I considered myself a nerd. Another thing I should probably mention is that I really had no idea about the size of my manhood in my pants. I just assumed that I was just like everyone else. Of course, the society girls raved about my size, but they had to, right? Of course, I didn't really believe them when they raved about my size. Linda and I dated for about six months before I proposed to her. Six months later, we got married. 
we were happy together. She worked as an accountant for a large national company with an office in Las Vegas. She made pretty good money there, and we combined our incomes to live a pretty good life. I never needed to dig into my secret accounts. We went to the best restaurants, saw shows, rode on a nice pontoon boat on the lake, and both drove nice cars. Our intimate life was pretty good. On average, we met about four times a week. We didn't have children yet, so our lovemaking took place almost all over the house, in the backyard, in the pool and hot tub. We loved the variety. Typically, after I got home from work, I would go to my store and potter around for a couple of hours before dinner. I spent about half the time working on one of my machines and the other half in the room playing on the computer. I didn't really do anything wrong, I just hacked into places I shouldn't have been. I never actually took anything or entered anything into the system. I kind of maintained my skills. Of course, I could steal a lot of data and money, but I didn't want to leave any traces. After dinner, we snuggled up on the couch and watched a movie before going to bed. Sometimes, the bed included a couple of hours of love before falling asleep. I continued to demonstrate my complete technological incompetence. After all, who would look at someone who can barely check his email and assume that he is one of the world's most wanted hackers? All this time, I was hacking the computer systems of banks, governments, and large businesses. I also reconfigured the army of personal computer bots that I used to have. I masked my location by initiating my hacks from foreign servers, sometimes from several servers at the same time. About six months ago, I noticed Linda was becoming a little more tense. It didn't really seem like that big of a deal, though. We have a night had dropped from about four times a week to two. She worked longer hours and was tired when she came home. Most of the time, she just went straight to the shower, ate dinner, and then went to bed. I asked her, and she said something about a big bill they were trying to get. It seemed plausible. Sometimes, she would call me from her office on a Friday to say that she was going to happy hour after work with a few of her co-workers. She had done this enough times for me not to worry. After about six months, I asked how long it would last. I figured by this time, they would either have the bill or lose it. Linda told me it would probably take another week or two before things calmed down again. I decided she needed a little pampering since she's been working so hard, so I bought her a full day spa package for this Saturday. She was thrilled when I gave it to her on Wednesday night. She thanked me, and we ended up in bed giving each other incredible pleasures. Saturday finally arrived, and she left for her spa day at 9am with a quick kiss as she walked out the door. She wouldn't be back until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I grabbed my coffee and went out to the shop to finish building the engine I had on the bench. After about an hour, I took a break and went to my computer room. Up until this point, I had deliberately avoided hacking Linda's company. It was one of those don't mess in your own kitchen things. I was pretty adamant about this. I did not contact the company I worked for, and I would not contact the company she worked for. After logging in and checking my security programs, I began to wonder what this large account was. Maybe I should look into what it was and maybe take a look at their servers to see what was there. Their safety was child's play. I was there in a couple of minutes. My first stop was Linda's computer. She was working on the project, so I could get some pointers in the right direction from there. Strange. There was nothing special about the new big clients. I did a few searches using the keywords offer, new client, etc., but found nothing. I started looking through her folders. That's when I found a locked folder called Photos for James. Why does Linda have a folder of photos for this little weasel? Yes, I knew who James was. I met him several times at corporate events that I went to with Linda. I didn't really like him very much, even though Linda thought she was actually pretty good with computers. I had the folder open in seconds. To say I was shocked would be the understatement of the year. There were dozens photo without clothes of Linda in her office. There were pictures of her having intim with another guy in different positions. The worst thing is that she even had photos of intimate games which she constantly denied me. I sat and stared blankly at the photographs. At that moment, I felt a part of me die. I soon came to my senses and started thinking about confronting her as soon as she returned home. The divorce from this, jerk, was a foregone conclusion. 
I had a few hours left before she returned home, so I continued to search for more information. I thought it probably started about six months ago when I first noticed a change in her. I opened her email and got an even bigger shock. Several of their email conversations revealed that this was much more of a long-term thing than I thought. Apparently, they had been lovers for about a year before she met me. If that's the case, then why did she start dating me in the first place? What's happening? I found another email where she mentioned something about accounting errors with several of her large clients, as well as their own company. Then there was something about an offshore account. I switched to James's computer. There were also photographs of Linda. Several showed her in what appeared to be a motel room and in another man's bedroom. I needed more time to do this, so I ended up copying his and Linda's computers as well as their folders on the company network to a spare drive on my server. Out of habit, I checked the personnel folder on the server. I stopped for a minute when I saw my name on one of the folders. Before leaving the network, I installed some spyware on both computers as well as on the server. This would automatically redirect everything they did to my computer system. Needless to say, any work on my cars took a back seat for a while. Linda returned from her spa day and thanked me with a long night of amazing intim. Yes, I was disgusted with her for what she did, but I'm a guy. I will not miss the opportunity to have amazing night with a beautiful, enthusiastic, and energetic woman. She could be the devil incarnate, and I would still take advantage of it. Oh, exactly, to me, she was the devil incarnate. Sunday came, and I returned to my store. Linda was sleeping when I got up, so I took the opportunity to open her phone and install spyware on it. Text messages would be secretly copied onto my computer system, and all phone calls would be monitored and digitally recorded on a separate hard drive. I would also be able to track everything she did online. Linda left around 10 a.m. She said she was going to meet one of her friends to go shopping. She had the Find My Friends app disabled on her phone, so I hacked into her car's internal GPS to track her instead. Surprisingly, she actually went to the mall. After making sure that she would not return soon, I took her laptop. The first step was to copy everything that was on the laptop to another hard drive. I then downloaded a keylogger program and configured the camera for remote access. I didn't think I'd have much time before returning the laptop to where she left it, so I decided to quickly check her browser history. That's when I found the second email address. I also noticed that she visited the bank in the Cayman Islands several times. I'll have to look at this later. I wiped some grease and oil off my hands and face to make it look like I was actually working on the car when I heard Linda come home. Shower, dinner, movie, then bed. For a week, I maintained the appearance of being an ignorant, loving husband. Every evening, I would go to the shop, pretending to work on one of my cars for a couple of hours. In fact, I was sorting through mountains of information that I had collected. On Tuesday evening, I read an exchange between Linda and James that caught my attention. James warned her about deleting the history on my laptop after using it. Why did she need my laptop? Of course, I set up my laptop to connect to servers as soon as I bought it, but I never thought about spying on myself. The next evening, as I was looking at the day's updates from their work computers, another stream of data started coming in. I quickly realized that this was from my personal laptop. Minimizing everything else, I began to look at the approaching new stream. There appeared to be money transfers taking place. I turned on the laptop camera and moved the feed to another screen. Linda worked on my computer. She also had Bluetooth in her ear. The microphone picked up her voice as she spoke. I used the third screen to start a live feed of her phone call. I watched and listened as Linda, following James's instructions, transferred approximately $50,000 from a fictitious account at their company to a bank in the Cayman Islands. And they used my computer for this. She soon finished, deleted that day's history, and logged out. What's going on here? I hadn't had time to look through my personnel file from their HR folder yet, and then I find out that I have been appointed as a computer security consultant. James apparently hired me since he was the head of their IT department. I also found several payments for my services. All of them, of course, went to the Cayman Islands account. Let's get a look. I was unknowingly hired as a computer security consultant. 
Linda and James used my computer and IP address to transfer large sums of money from a fake account at their company to an offshore bank. Moreover, Linda and James were having an affair before I even met Linda. I began to understand that I was being pulled into something. It's time to change gears. Now that I understood what was happening, I needed to see how bad it was and figure out what to do about it. It was bad. When I checked the account in the Cayman Islands, I saw that there was almost $10 million in it. Checking the transactions, I saw that they did this about six months after Linda and I got married. They also not so subtly tried to hide which computer was used to steal the money. To make matters worse, digging deeper into my personnel file revealed several red flags. Yeah, when the stuff hit the fan, I was in the target zone. So what should I do about it now? Surprisingly, it wasn't actually that hard to act normal around this. Did she want me? I enjoyed having her. As I started to really have them both, what can I tell you? She's hot. Yes, I took every opportunity to have intim with her. The following Saturday, I went through her emails from the beginning of our meeting. That's when I found out that they had chosen me as their scapegoat from day one. Yes, she thought I was attractive and that intimate with me wouldn't be such a chore, but she was a little worried about my obvious lack of computer skills. James thought it would be a bonus. The less I know about operating computers, the less likely I am to know their plan. Now, I needed a plan for revenge. I started setting everything up. First, a couple of new bank accounts were opened. I then activated the bot army I had created. Most of the bot army would be a distraction, but I had one small group that could be tracked down, although it would be difficult. Only a really good hacker would be able to match it to the source. I didn't want it to be too easy. Of course, I erased the personnel folder with my name on it from Linda's company servers. I also hacked and changed all the file transfers that were done on my laptop to show a different IP address to prevent this from happening again. I read a very nasty virus on my laptop and then disconnected it from my secret servers. Later that evening, when I went to check my email, I discovered that a virus had attacked my laptop from the spam I had opened and pretty much destroyed it. I wasn't surprised by the worry on Linda's face when she saw what had happened. The next morning, I saw an exchange of messages between Linda and James. Apparently, they were almost at the end of the scam. They just wanted two more transfers to get another $10 million before luring me into a trap. The plan was to suddenly discover the theft. Of course, since Linda would be the only one who actually discovered this, she would be in charge of the investigation. James, as an IT manager, would lead the cyber portion of the investigation. No wonder everything leads straight to me. Linda, of course, will file for divorce while I'm in jail, and then in about a year, she'll marry James. Of course, there will be some suspicion about Linda's possible involvement, but she will point to her investigation as well as her belief that I must have been hiding my knowledge of computers from her. Furthermore, it should be obvious that she was a victim since I specifically targeted her and used her to gain access to the company's computer systems. They both laughed at the thought of me trying to answer questions about where the money went when I had no idea what the police were talking about. Linda also said that she would buy me a new laptop and that they could do the final transfers within the next three weeks. Now I knew what my deadline was. On Monday, I told my boss that I needed a week off to do some personal things. I had a lot of free time, so it wasn't a problem. I did some research on the internet to find the meanest, dirtiest, most aggressive shark for a divorce lawyer in town and made an appointment for the next day. They thought they had three weeks, but they would be lucky if they lasted two. Returning home, I turned on the computer and got to work. I logged into James's home computer. For an IT guy, you'd think he'd be smart enough to turn it off when he's not using it. No, all he did was turn off the monitor. I ran his computer through a server in Belarus. Not that it would really matter because the connection would be erased anyway. His computer would be the end of the road for anyone who follows it. The cartel I joined five years ago at least learned a thing or two about security. They changed their accounts and passwords, but still used the same banks. Updated passwords only work if you don't store them on your personal computers, which are vulnerable to phishing software embedded in email links for products that any multimillionaire would want. This was just preliminary work. I'll wait until I'm done with Linda before I go after James. As usual, I went to my shop to work on my car. 
she actually left to run to Walmart and buy me a new laptop. While she was away, I did some preliminary work on the arrangement. It was important for her to be at home when she used the computer. If she could show that she was not at home, she would have an alibi. I couldn't let that happen. When she got home, she texted me that she had bought me a new laptop and said it would take her about an hour to set it up for me. I thanked her and got to work. First, I cut all ties with James. I hated her, but I still didn't want her to get hurt. James will probably be tortured and killed, but Linda will just go to prison for the next couple of decades. Who knows? I used a separate server route to Linda's laptop. There is no detour here, just a direct link to her work computer and then to the company servers. $20 million was transferred from the company to four different accounts in her name. Travel plans were then made, and a one-way ticket was purchased for her to the Cayman Islands on Thursday morning. Before leaving her computer, I removed James from her contacts, erased all emails with him, and deleted all history from the account. Then, I removed all my spyware. It was a risk, but I didn't think she'd have enough time to do anything too bad. Finally, I severed and erased the connection I had with her laptop. After all this, I remotely disabled the wireless router in the house. I had a separate one and a much better one in the store. Of course, she didn't know this. The message popped out from the spyware I installed on her phone. Apparently, she had finished setting up the laptop for me when the internet disappeared. She was just about to use my computer for another transmission when the connection was lost. I laughed while they were discussing the problem. I transferred all the money they had already stolen into new accounts that I created in Linda's name. As soon as this account was empty, I closed it. The last thing I did was remove the spyware from Linda's phone. I didn't know who would be looking at it later, and I didn't want anyone to know she was being watched. Then I closed everything and went to dinner. Tomorrow will be an interesting day, to say the least. Linda was a little nervous, to say the least, when I walked in. She told me that my new computer was set up and ready, but the internet was down. I won't be able to log in or check my email. She had no idea how little of a problem this was for me. That evening, she was busy throughout the entire movie. Out of the corner of my eye, I watched her playing on her phone. I could almost feel her disappointment growing. I suspected that she was trying to access the account and failed. She was also messaging someone. When I went to bed, I smiled. There was no love that night. The next morning, I got up and left the house before Linda left for work. Basically, I was just fooling around until I met with the lawyer. I was wondering how Linda's day was, however, in a couple of hours, I will find out everything. Finally, I was shown into my lawyer's office. You know those TV shows where a handsome lawyer in a very professional but extremely hot suit walks into the courtroom and pretty much hands his fifth place over to the board on a silver platter? It was my lawyer. Five, six tall, an angelic face, curves that would make a race car lose control, legs for miles, and a chest that would start a war. Two minutes into the hearing, and I could tell she was going to be a barracuda in the courtroom. You could almost hear your heart singing along with the choir in the room. After making sure everything was confidential, I explained that my wife had been cheating on me throughout our entire relationship. Next, I explained to her about the embezzlement and the frame-up. She asked how I knew about all this, and I gave her a partial answer. I didn't exactly lie, but I didn't tell her the whole truth. Okay, I lied like crazy. I told her that I was using my wife's laptop because mine wasn't working properly. That's when I saw a folder with a bunch of hot photos and then found her emails to her lover. The emails documented her betrayal and their waste. I just wanted to get out of this marriage before all this hit the fan. She agreed to take on this matter and begin preparing documents. She said she could probably serve her by the end of the week. I told her to hold it for a while. I suddenly had a better idea and didn't want to reveal too much too soon. We ended the meeting and I went home, turned on my system, restarted my home Wi-Fi, and got to work. I left spyware running at Linda's work. Apparently, the expletive hit the fan full force first thing in the morning. An emergency meeting was held, the $20 million theft was discovered, and an investigation was launched. By this time, I had managed to hack James's phone. James followed the theft and discovered that it led directly to Linda. 
He also discovered that their account had been emptied and transferred to new accounts with $20 million since last night. Accusations rained down, and no justification could be found. Suddenly, Linda received an email saying she was being called to a meeting with the CEO, CFO, and head of security. This should be interesting. The sound of several cars pulling into my driveway interrupted my fun. I locked up, went into the main store, and locked the secret door. No one needs to be interested in this room. Yes, I put lube on myself to make it look like I was working on my car as I exited the store. I saw several police cars as well as several large Chevrolet Suburbans. The police were wearing their regular uniforms, but the people getting out of the large SUVs were wearing windbreakers with FBI written on the back. I wonder what this could be about. I barely glanced at the warrants and let them into the house. Of course, I offered all possible help since I had nothing to hide. Yes, this must be my wife's computer. This is mine, but it hasn't really been used since we just got it yesterday, and the Wi-Fi was down last night. Of course, take whatever you think you need. No, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Sorry, I'm not very good with computers. Just ask my wife and all our friends. I lost track of what was happening to Linda when I was taken to the police station and questioned harshly for several hours. My story has withstood it all. After all, I was just a truck driver with little to no computer knowledge. No, I had no idea what my wife did at work. She was an accountant and worked with several clients, but I didn't know who those clients were. What do you mean by a one-way ticket out of the country? Only she. No, I have no idea why she would fly somewhere without me. It soon became clear to them that I knew nothing about what was happening. They thoroughly searched my store but did not find the entrance to the computer room. In the end, they sent me home. Linda was arrested while I was being questioned. Poor James was forced to testify against her and also see all the money found so it could be returned. He must have really felt betrayed when he found out that she had cut off his access to the money, transferred it into her own accounts, and then booked a one-way trip out of the country, leaving him with nothing. Fortunately, I foresaw that I would be interrogated. After all, I was her husband. It would be reasonable to assume that I might be working with her on this. Of course, I was her only phone call. Being an obedient husband, I called and found her a lawyer. Yes, I made inquiries about every criminal defense lawyer in town. Obviously, I needed to find the best lawyers so I wouldn't accidentally screw up and hire one of them for her. No, I purposely hired one of those who was slightly below average. I wanted her to be convicted and serve her entire sentence. The cool thing is that this is a federal case and that there is no parole or release for good behavior in federal prisons. If you are sentenced to 20 years in federal court, you will spend all 20 years in federal prison. All the way. I attended her bail hearing and used the house as collateral to bail her out. Because she was at risk of fleeing, she had to wear an ankle monitor. No matter how much I hated her, I could pretend to be a loving husband by all outward signs. Luckily, she was too depressed and shocked by her predicament to want into him. Her cell phone was confiscated as evidence, so I went down and bought her a new one. Yes, I took it to my store and added my spyware to it before giving it to her. Strangely, James blocked her number after she wrote him the first message. He replied that he could not have any contact with her since he was going to be called as a witness against her. Foolishly, she refused a plea deal and insisted on going to trial. She continued to claim that someone had set her up. She really thought she would win. True, she didn't do it. Oh, she was guilty of taking half the money that was in that account, just not all the money, or using that particular account or using her own computer, or buying a plane ticket, or firing her partner. Of course, the money was returned and returned easily. The trial was funny from my point of view. It was very interesting to watch James testify against her using computer records. I saw his internal struggle over having to testify against his mistress, but he also thought that she had betrayed him and was planning to run away and leave him behind. All Linda could see was that her soulmate had betrayed her and sent her to prison. I was filled with jubilation during the three days of his testimony. I watched silently as her love for him turned into hatred. She did her best on the witness stand testifying on her own behalf. Unfortunately for her, the evidence was too strong and she really couldn't come up with a plausible explanation for it. 
she will spend the next 20 years in federal prison. As the trial came to an end, it was time to take care of James. I had a really evil plan for him. Unfortunately, he will never know why this happened to him or that it was me. I couldn't take that risk. That would be fun. I asked my lawyer to change the divorce papers to take into account Linda's conviction and the fact that she would be in prison for the next two decades. She was served within a couple of days. I opened a couple of new accounts in Geneva, Switzerland, and the Cayman Islands with links to James using the dark web. I left a few subtle traces, all of which led to James's IP address. The ghost returned after five years. Of course, Hacker Chats picked it up. Now comes the hard part. I had to leave a mark. But it couldn't be obvious. I needed to make it possible for them to believe that it was an experienced hacker and to believe that it was actually me but still allow them to believe that I had made a small enough mistake that they could still go on the trail. I had to go through 10 servers in 6 different countries. In the end, I launched an army of bots and attacked the first bank. I finally went in, found the two accounts I was looking for, and transferred them to James's new accounts. Having done this, I stopped the attack on the bank, severed and erased my connection to James's computer, and then entered the dark web to observe the reaction. I didn't really expect anything yet, but it's better to be careful. The next morning, there was another attack on another bank. For more accounts were emptied. Now there was 20 million in the account I opened for James. People started looking for me. They won't find me, of course, but they will eventually find the goat. Several dark web hacker boards caught fire. There was a group that was following the trail. It seemed like it was the same group that had been tracking me five years ago. It's time to end this. I returned to the bank. I bypassed James's computer and transferred $20 million to another account I had opened in Switzerland. I then erased all fingerprints from that transmission. I wasn't worried about the cartel getting that money back. I logged back into James's computer and launched another attack on a bank account that had a tracker embedded in it. This time it was only $2 million. The money didn't matter, only the tracker attached to it did. Last time, I ran away because I knew about the thefts and could see how the beacon worked. If I didn't know about the money transfers or accounts I had, and if I didn't know about the tracker attached to that last account, I would have been caught. I wonder how James will try to explain all this to them. I'd like to see them asking him where the money is when he has no idea what kind of money they're talking about. It's time to cut ties with his computer and erase all my fingerprints. This was a week later. I cleared out my computer room and turned it into a storage room. I was finishing up paperwork for a place I had purchased in Montana through a C corporation that was keeping my name under wraps when a missing person story broke on the news. It seemed James hadn't shown up for work for a couple of days, and no one knew where he was. His car was found abandoned in a shopping center parking lot, but he was nowhere to be seen. H.M., I wonder where he might be. Well, I needed to get back to packing. James. No. I screamed as they used the cow prod again to torture me. I swear I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Ghost, this time you made a mistake, they said menacingly. The tracking software led us straight to your computer. We found all the data on your computer. We recovered $2 million from the last hack, but we want to know where the remaining $20 million is, as well as the $30 million from five years ago. You tell us this, and we will quickly kill you. Keep lying to us, and it will only get worse. But I do not know. I pleaded. They grabbed me just as I was about to get into my car at the mall. I felt a needle prick in my neck, then nothing. I woke up a few hours later on a private jet, securely strapped to my seat. That's when the questions began. I had no idea what they were talking about. They kept calling me ghost. They asked about the money they said I stole a few days ago. There were $20 million and another $30 million five years ago. They didn't believe me when I said I didn't know anything. I actually wet myself when I was shown the hard evidence on my personal computer. If I could give them the answers they needed, I'd die quickly. Otherwise, they would turn the rest of my, much shorter, life into pure agony. I screwed myself when I realized I had no answers to give them. Right now, I was hanging without clothes from the ceiling of a bunker somewhere deep in the jungles of Colombia. 
my legs were spread apart to give them access to my genitalia. With the help of a cattle prod, I've been here for three days already. On the first day, they beat me when I couldn't answer. On the second day, there was a whip. Today, it is a push for cattle into sensitive areas. I really wish I could give them answers. I really don't want to know what will happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Mark moving day. James left a little over a month ago. His tortured body was found on the side of a road in Columbia yesterday. Mark will disappear by the end of the day. I will accept my new identity after one more stop. I have already sent everything I took with me. All this was sent to a storage facility in Denver, paid for by bank transfer from an anonymous account. Linda was brought in and handcuffed to the table opposite me. She didn't look very good. Orange was definitely not her color. No makeup. Her hair was a little disheveled. She also had bags under her eyes. Looks like she's not used to prison yet. So, how are you holding up? I asked. Please, Mark, you have to help me. I didn't do what they said, she begged. Linda, I sigh, I can't do anything for you. Besides, we're getting a divorce. Please, Mark, I didn't do this, and I don't want a divorce. Just sign the papers. Linda, everything is over. Please, Mark, just talk to James. See if you can get his help, he can help me. We were once friends, please just ask him, she begged. Have you heard of James? I asked. No, I kept waiting for his visit, but he never came. Well, now he will never come, he was killed in Colombia, I said. Her face turned white with shock. No, he couldn't do it, she said. He may not have known, but they seem to think he knew, I replied. Now, Linda, you really should just sign the divorce papers and forget about it. But you'll leave me with nothing, she exclaimed. Certainly, you don't need anything here, you'll be here for the next 20 years. Please, Mark, you have to help me. I can't stay here, I need to get out of here, please. It's time to let me tell you a story, Linda, perhaps this will help you. About five years ago, there was a really good hacker they called the ghost. The hacker got this tag because he was good at covering his tracks. It was literally as if a ghost had invaded the computer system. So, the ghost decided to go after some pill cartels. In fact, it was a personal mission. Over $30 million was stolen from one of the cartels before the cartel hired other hackers to track down the phantom. Of course, the elusive man saw the trackers approaching and vanished before he was found. The ghost disappeared and created a new life. He ceased to exist and stopped all computer activity, except for some minor hacking of systems for practice and maintenance of technology. To everyone who knew him, he was quite computer illiterate. Even his wife didn't know who he really was. Yes, he fell in love and got married. He truly loved his wife with all his heart. After being married for three years, he accidentally discovered that his wife was not in love with him. He found out that she had been cheating on him throughout their relationship with her real boyfriend. To make matters worse, he found out that his wife only married him so that she and her boyfriend could frame him for the embezzlement they were committing. Her eyes were as big as saucers, and her skin turned completely white when I told her about their plan. So, the ghost decided he couldn't let that happen and made a plan to get revenge on those two. First, he hacked into their computers, phones, and work network to obtain information. He then changed everything to remove his name from the frame and put all the evidence directly on his wife. He also made sure his wife's boyfriend believed she was cheating on him. The final blow for his wife was to force her lover to testify against her and put her in prison for many years. Breaking their hearts and believing that they were betrayed by another, almost in the same way that the phantom felt betrayed by his wife. Now, to continue. Since his wife has been taken care of, it is time to go after her lover. After all, the cartel was still looking for the phantom. Why not take revenge and make the cartel believe that they have finally caught their prey? Well, the ghost used his wife's lover's computer to hack and steal a ton of money from this cartel. Unfortunately for his wife's ex-boyfriend, the ghost was a little careless and made a small mistake. The ghost didn't completely destroy the trail leading to the boyfriend's computer, so the cartel was able to trace the hack back to the boyfriend. 
Authorities believe the boyfriend was tortured for more than a month before he finally died. Unfortunately for the guy, he simply didn't have the information the cartel needed. None of this is actually real or plausible, much less provable, but I thought a fictional story like this might help you cope, I said. True, I believe that you did not do exactly what the evidence says, but no you were not even close to innocent. Now just sign the papers. Just think about what life would be like if the wrong person happened upon some information that shows you to be a prison snitch, I continued. I watched as her face turned from white to red. You stupid, she screamed and rushed towards me. It is no coincidence that the guards attached handcuffs to the table. The chains are short enough that the prisoner cannot reach someone on the other side of the table. I walked out as they dragged her away screaming. I got into a cheap disposable car and drove to the mall. After parking, I left Mark in the car and walked to the other side where my real car was waiting for me with my new identity. I drove away. What do you think the main character did? Write your opinion in the comments. See you in the next video.